something you can change, there's still some self-acceptance that needs to happen in order for you to love the way you look to get to where you need to be. Because if you hate yourself and the, your weight and your goal is to lose weight or to gain weight or whatever it is, it's not going to be an exciting process to get to that place that you want to be. So if you love yourself the way you are, you learn how to accept, you know what? I'm obese. I'm 300 pounds. I'm 400 pounds, 600 pounds, but I accept myself who I am. And now I'm going to enter that journey to lose weight and to be healthy. And you're loving the process. Welcome to Journey to Joy Live, a podcast to promote wellness, resilience, and joy while providing mental health awareness and breaking down the stigma of mental illness in the black community. I'm your host, Dr. N. Joy, and I bring to you today episode 38, Body Love. Loving the skin you're in. Do you suffer from body image issues? Sometimes you feel like you don't like who you see in the mirror or you don't like who you see in those pictures and you don't like looking at yourself in pictures or you don't take a lot of pictures or when it comes time to FaceTime somebody, you keep the camera off. Is that you? Many, many, many people go through that. I mean, I feel like every single person has gone through that in some level. Of course, there's levels, right? There's the lower extreme of maybe you don't like a certain part of yourself, but you get over it and you just move on. And then there's the other extreme where it's so bad that you um, end up depressed because of the way you look or not liking your body or the skin that you're in. So there's different extremes. I mean, 53% of 12 year olds don't like their body, don't like what they look like. And that increases to about 78% of 17 year olds who say that they have body image issues. I mean, that's a time in adolescence where a lot of changes are happening in our bodies in general. So again, along with identity crisis, trying to figure out who you are, what you are, why you are, then there's the what do you look like and not um, loving who you are, who you look like or what you are. And then as life goes on, age goes on. We want to keep living and we love our lives, but you can't help but have an aging body. So how do we just love the skin that we're in despite that? And that's what I want to promote is loving who you are despite what you have, because our bodies are a vehicle for our lives, right? Just like the same way you drive a car and your car takes you from A to B, your body is taking you from A to B. So what I want to promote today is if you sometimes body shame yourself and you say, I don't like what I see. Is it really just about what you see? For those people out there who are willing to drive a car that's old, used, and it's paid off. So you like, I got my car and it doesn't matter what it looks like, but it gets you from A to B. Yeah. Adopt that perception when it comes to your body, because your body is literally a vehicle for you to get through life. It helps you sleep. You're able to eat. Majority of us are able to feed ourselves and chew it and swallow it and it digests the food on our, on its own and you are able to poop it out on its own. There's some people, they're not able to do that. They're not able to swallow. They're not able to chew. They're not able to digest. It doesn't poop out on its own. They got to literally push it out because they have an ostomy bag. Yeah, I just go on graphic right away. Think about that. Think about what your body is doing for you before you shame it and say, I don't like the way I look. I don't like my body. I hate my body. Think about what it actually is doing. You're breathing on your own. You're not on a vent. You don't need a machine to help you breathe. So there's different things that you're, it's doing for you and you don't even realize it. When you breathe in oxygen, that oxygen goes to the blood and that blood is carrying that oxygen to every single organ. Cause if it wasn't able to do that, you wouldn't be able to live. So let's kind of change our minds about or perception about our bodies and what they're supposed to do. I mean, where did this even come from? Body image and what we look like. What is body image? What, what is that? Well, you know, it refers to the way we perceive ourselves, the way we feel about our bodies, 
You know, you don't have body image issues when it comes to somebody else. Like, oh, I don't like the way they look. It's usually about yourself and shaming your body. Why is that okay? Thinking about your size, your shape, your appearance, and just your overall physical attributes. That's what body image is like, thinking about everything physical and not what it does. But it's how you feel and how you think about your body. And it's your perception. Beauty, as they say, is in the eye of the beholder. It's your percep perception of what it is. Everybody has their own beauty. So we need to love every body, every single body, no matter what. I mean, body image is influenced by various factors. Of course, there's societal standards, what society thinks that your body should look like. There's cultural standards. I was going to get into that later, but growing up, you know, for the white culture, it's kind of like tall, skinny, real thin, no butt, thighs don't touch. African-American community, black community, it's about being curvy, small waist, maybe big boobs, maybe small boobs, but those big butt, that kind of thing, just looking a certain way. You know, that's an example of our cultural ideals. People go to, to Africa and being skinny is looked down, frowned upon. It's like, what? Look at how small she is. In fact, when I was in high school, I don't remember what grade, maybe ninth, 10th grade, I was really skinny. I was a size zero. I remember a size zero because I remember when I went to the Bone Thug, Thugs and Harmony concert, the first concert, my mom continues to remind me that the outfit that I wore was this silver, platinum, shiny, metallic outfit <laughs> and it was a size zero I was a size zero and I I actually didn't have any body image issues I was fine but this bigger peer decided that she wanted to call me a bag of bones and that's a whole other thing like when you feel like you have issues with the way you look then you go and shame somebody else so she thought it was okay to call me a bag of bones and ever since then I was self-conscious about the way I looked and about being skinny and I'm using the word skinny a lot right now, but that's not usually a word I use frequently ever since then because I felt, ooh, being skinny is bad. She called me a bag of bones. There must be something wrong with me. So ever since then, I wanted to gain weight. I wanted to look more voluptuous. I was looking at how the curvy black women look, and I felt like, well, I need to look that way. In fact, Serena Williams always wanted that kind of athletic build nice and, and curvy, athletic, toned look. So here I am looking outside when I was doing just fine, just loving my, my thin body frame. But then that one individual messed me up. And that's how it tends to happen. You know, there's the media portraying image and how we should look shows like Top Model, which I don't think that's still playing. I used to watch that a lot. But they started to have plus size models. And there's a lot of... Um, shows and industries out right now that are portraying plus size models. It's really great because really that's what the bodies look like. Majority of the bodies are plus size, uh, but just different experiences that we've had with other people, personal beliefs, there's all kinds of factors that play into body image and, you know, having that negative body image contributes to us having the psychological issues, low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, and then eating disorders. I was gonna to try to pack in details about eating disorders today. That's gonna to be next week because there's so much I can talk about with eating disorders. Let's keep this to about body image before we get to the eating disorders. So, you know, ask yourself, do I have an unrealistic view of my body? I mean, there's realistic views and there's unrealistic views. If you are telling yourself, oh, I hate myself because I'm too short, Think about what you can change and what you can't. If you can't change it, go to therapy to try to figure out a process that and literally get over it. Because if you if you think you're too short, there's nothing you can do. You can wear some heels if you're a female. Hey, m m there's, there's some heels on shoes, but it really isn't anything you can do. So if you're going through life about being too short or being too tall, you're wasting your mental energy because you can't change it. You really can't. So if you need to go to therapy, journal, do all the self-care, positivity, all those positive affirmations that you can do so that you can get beyond that hold, that mental hold that you have 
that I need to change my height. I hate my height because height is something you can't change. If it's about weight, that is something you can change. For some people, it's easier. If you want to gain weight, there's ways to do that in a healthy way. If you want to lose weight, there's ways to do that in a healthy way. So, and for a lot of us, it's better to be able to lose weight because there's some physical issues like with obesity comes diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, lots of different reasons to lose weight anyway, but we have to do it in a healthy way. And for people who need to gain weight, there's healthy reasons to gain weight because being malnourished is attached to uh, low weight. So there's definitely reasons to do it, but if you're over there, you know, feeling really sad about the way you look and it's something you can change, there's still some self-acceptance that needs to happen in order for you to love the way you look to get to where you need to be. Because if you hate yourself and the, your weight and your goal is to lose weight or to gain weight or whatever it is, it's not going to be an exciting process to get to that place that you want to be. So if you love yourself the way you are, you learn how to accept, you know what? I'm obese. I'm 300 pounds and 400 pounds, 600 pounds, but I accept myself who I am. And now I'm going to enter that journey to lose weight and to be healthy. And you're loving the process. It's not like hating yourself on the way. Cause when you hate yourself on the way to that goal, you're going to give up and you're going to try to rush it. You're going to try to stop eating for a week which is not possible <laughs> and it, it, it'll fail, it'll fail. So there's a level of self-acceptance that needs to happen before trying to enter that goal of the, the thing about your body that you're trying to change. Of course, if the body image is attached to gender dysphoria, I touched on that last week. If you feel like you are not in the right gender, your body is not, what the genitals that you were born with doesn't feel right or you don't want to use them or you never want to use them for what your body uses them for that's another thing as well you can have therapy to try to process that and talk it through do I really feel this way do I really feel like I'm a woman stuck in a man's body or a man stuck in a woman's body is this just a phase or is this really I am that man stuck in a woman's body let me talk to a therapist you usually have to get clearance to talk to a um, by talking to a therapist to be able to do a gender change anyway. So it's it's a part of that. And then you talk to an endocrinologist to talk about the hormone treatment, meet with a surgeon that's attached to the endocrinologist. If there's any types of surgery that you want in order to change your body again, things that can be changed. Focus on those things, but there's still a level of self-acceptance before um, entering that journey to change or else you're not gonna, you're not gonna love the journey. And it's about loving the journey. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about my experience with pregnancy because pregnancy, I talked about aging, talked about teenagers and how they get with not liking their bodies. Being pregnant can change your perception of your body as well. And I did not like my body when I was first pregnant. <laughs> my second baby, he treated me well. I didn't have too many issues or too many changes. But with Legend, when I was pregnant with him, I had all kinds of issues. I had gestational diabetes. I had carpal tunnel. I had swelling everywhere. I was a different person. And in fact, my husband will never agree with me, and that's good, husband. You should continue to not agree with me, but my nose, one day I noticed that my whole nose was like the size of my face, and I was just like, oh my gosh, that is not me. That is not my nose, and I started looking at uh, previous pictures of myself before I, I was pregnant. Thank you, why He said you were beautiful. You continue to say that. I started looking up pictures of how I looked before I was pregnant. And I was just like, that's not my nose. What's my nose? I was looking darker than usual. My hair continued to look amazing. It continued to look amazing. But 
the nose, the swelling, and of course there's the weight gain that you automatically get. I got up to 237 pounds. I mean, granted, I was, I had gained weight anyway before the pregnancy. I was like 190 pounds, so I had gained anyway. And then, and then tack on the hormones of being pregnant and just making you feel bad just because hormones make you feel bad. So I, I definitely felt like, oh my God, is this the new me? Am I going to get my face back? Am I going to get my body back? Yeah, I did. You know, when you breastfeed. Yeah, COVID does that for you too. I did, my husband put a comment that COVID, COVID does that to you too. It was a quarantine. It was during the quarantine. I wasn't getting out the house. I wasn't exercising. I was eating crap all day. So yeah, that definitely made things worse. Oh, <clears throat> I have a picture. <laughs> I used to call myself Fiona from um, Shrek. Look, it's different. Look at the nose. Don't agree. Audience, you better not agree with me. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah, so that was me and that's how I felt. And I think a lot of women feel that way when they're pregnant. They just feel like they're not themselves. And we body shame ourselves. And it's good to just say to ourselves, you know what? You're growing a whole human from scratch inside your body. Who cares what you look like? You're growing an entire human being. And I have to keep reminding myself that there's that mind that reframing your thoughts and how you feel about things. It's like, Oh, who cares? And it snapped back. My nose is back. My body is back. That kind of thing. When you breastfeed, you lose a lot of weight right away. And then the, yeah, I know I hit a wall and I have to work towards the weight loss. So you, you have to work towards your goal and where you want to be. And just thinking about the things that you can change and focus on that, but accept the way where you are now. So positive body image. That's so important. It's attached to improved mental health. If you have negative body image, that's just going to lead you to depression, lead you to anxiety, lead you to feeling like you'll never have love. You'll never have anyone that loves you. It's attached to that self-love, right? You have to have self-love, self-acceptance, uh, self-compassion. And then people, that's attractive. People are attracted to that. So there's that cycle of, I suck, I look uh, ugly, I'm going to be lonely. Nobody's going to be attracted to that. Self-hatred, no one's attracted to that. So kind of, you're right. You will end up alone because no one's attracted to that. So that's why we have to change our minds and how we think of ourselves because people are attracted to self-love, self-compassion, self-respect, self-worth. So you got to give that to yourself before you can give that to anybody else and before anybody else is going to give it to you. It's important. It might be hard to hear. A lot of this is hard, but I say all the time, it's supposed to be hard. You have to work for it sometimes. And like, like I said, if you want to get to a certain physical appearance, as long as it's something that you can change, do it, but do it in a healthy way. My husband, shout out to Juan Mena. I finally am getting to a place where I'm able to lose the weight that I wanted to because I've we've introduced intermittent fasting and I hate fasting and I don't like it. But, you know, men, they can lose weight whenever they want just because of a certain diet. And it's like, OK, you know what? I'm going to try your diet, Juan. So I finally tried his. I cut out breakfast and breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I love breakfast. But I said, you know what? Let's see if it'll work. So intermittent fasting has worked for me and it's helped the weight come off as well as cutting out breads and cutting out sweets and just limiting the amount of hours of the day that I eat. That is something that my body was able to do. If you're hypoglycemic, you have diabetes or any other issues, you know, talk to your doctor about something like that. Talk to a nutritionist about what works for you. Because when you lose the weight that you need to lose, you're healthier, your mindset is healthier, you're less depressed, less anxious, less stressed, less likely to have a stroke, heart attack, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and you're living longer. So a positive body image attached to a positive, healthy lifestyle, that's what we all want to do. That's our joy 
journey that we're trying to get into. So it's really important. Well, how do we get there? How do we build a positive body image, that self-confidence? I mean, we there's adopting certain strategies that promote self-acceptance, self-compassion, and healthy behaviors. Self-care. Of course, I'm going to talk about practicing self-care because that is at the surface of everything that we talk about. It's at the surface. It's not even beneath. Self-care. Do it. Engage in those activities that nourish your body and your mind. Exercise, eating nutritiously. <laughs> oh, and another thing about the intermittent fasting I'm doing, I've cut out a lot of the meats. And for those of you who are like, Ugh, she's talking about cutting out meat. That's me. That's, I'm usually that person because I love meats. But I'm now realizing that the heavy eating, and we did watch that um, documentary. What was it called? Um, if you're listening, Juan, put the name of the documentary. I forget. Was well, something about what you eat? <laughs> so anyway, what you eat hurts you. I don't know, but anyway, you are what you eat. Whatever the name of the the um, podcast is. I mean, not the podcast, but the uh, documentary. But it was basically showing that vegan eaters, vegetarian eaters, you are what you eat. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening. Thanks for watching. But yeah, basically you are what you eat. So vegan eaters are healthier and feel better. And I've noticed that I felt lighter with cutting out a lot of dairy. I mean, I still eat some dairy. Like I love my broccoli cheese soup. But dairies and meats, they're a lot more heavier. So uh, I guess I'm on the bandwagon of vegetarian is better. Uh, I hate to admit it because I'm the person that I, I need. Well, I need shrimp and I need sushi and seafood. So really, I mean, if I had to go without pork, beef and chicken, I suppose I could do it. But I still love my beef taco here and there. Um, and then chicken sausage. I get the HelloFresh so that it has a lot of meals with chicken sausage. Anyway, nutritious eating. Try it. Why not? Why not try and see if the gluten-free diet works for you and see if you feel better? And if you do, why go back to the things that don't make you feel as good? And making sure you get adequate sleep, relaxation techniques like yoga and meditation. Those are really good self-care practice practices that can help you engage in more body positivity and get that body joy that really we should aim for because our bodies are doing things that help us get through life. So why shame it? Why kick its tires and, and you know, take care of it? <laughs> Going back to that car analogy, challenge your negative thoughts. Recognize that negative self-talk like I look ugly or I look this. Challenge that. Um, I think it was during the self-love podcast that I talked about how sometimes I have negative self-talk when I'm putting on my makeup because I do have the acne scar and I look at my skin and I'm just like, oh, sometimes I do that. And then I challenge myself. I'm like, wait, what? How dare I? I am so beautiful regardless or despite these features that I think look negative. Or if you have freckles all over your face and you think to yourself, oh my God, these freckles. I'm saying it with a smile because freckles are so beautiful. They're beautiful. Or you have a disease that has hypopigmented spots or um, raised moles or um, acne, just, just this blazing acne that doesn't go away. Love your body. Accept your skin. Go see a dermatologist if you need to and it's causing you pain. And it really is a health issue. Sure. Yeah. Take care of your, your health needs. But there's always this level of acceptance. You deserve that self-acceptance. You deserve that self-love and self-compassion. So surrounding yourself with positivity. If you're watching stuff that's telling you and feed into your mind that, oh, I should be skinny or I should be curvy or I should look this way. Or if you saw Love is Blind and you're looking at 80s body and you're like, wow, that's how I need to look. My butt like this and my waistline. She's very beautiful. But that doesn't mean you have to look that way. Not everybody looks that way. Not everybody can get that way. G genetics, right? But, you know, if you have a genetics booty 
more power to you, but you can also get a squat booty. So I do a lot of squats. You can get there. So, you know, we can try the AD uh, fitness method if we can, but if you can't, it's okay. <laughs> ah, I digress. I digress. So focus on your strengths. What are your strengths? What can you do? You're able to walk. You're able to run. If you can't walk or run, you're able to crawl. You're able to move your wheelchair. Whatever it is you're able to do, there is something you're able to do. Because if you're listening to my voice, you can hear. There's something positive that your body is doing. And it's actually a long list of things that your body is doing. And if you want to disagree with me, contact me and I can help you come up with a list of 100 things that your body is doing that is positive. So think about those things. Write that down. What are your talents? What are your strengths? What are your unique qualities? Focus on that, not what it's not doing, but what it is doing. And set those realistic goals, set achievable goals, you know, related to your health and your well-being instead of focusing on your appearance. It goes back to what your body is doing for you, not how it looks. And just reframing your mind of what beauty is. Like beauty doesn't have to look like the curvy butt with the skinny waistline or no butt and thighs that don't touch and red hair or blue eyes and black hair. It doesn't have to look like that or hair, period. What did NDRE say? She is not her hair. I had to go through that. I never went through a big chop or like lost too much hair, but I did go through a level of that because before, or even while I was pregnant, I had so much, so much hair. But then uh, like six months postpartum, I, tell, I could tell over time, I was like, wait a minute, I lost hair. I had postpartum hair loss. And I was sad. I was like, oh my God, where's my hair? But you're not your hair. You know, get another style in a different way. Do whatever you need to do because your beauty is not defined by the first initial thought or your perception challenge your thoughts, challenge your perceptions, practice mindfulness. So having mindfulness and staying present in the moment, that helps you have that non-judgmental awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, your sensations, be present so that you're not having those racing thoughts about what you should be or what you should have. And honestly, if media is triggering for you, limit that, limit social media, limit what you're watching. If there's this continuous, um, you know, influences from the media that makes you think that these unrealistic beauty standards are right or that trigger negative body image for you. I love um, watching, well, we love watching the uh, reality shows about love. So Love is Blind or uh, Married at First Sight. I haven't seen that in a while. They haven't had a new one in a while. But I really love it when they have people on there who's not the ideal of beauty. And we're just like, oh, yeah, that's a normal looking person, right? (laughs) Because everybody doesn't look like what Hollywood portrays or what the model looks like or Barbie. Like everybody in Barbie was very um, Barbie-like, obviously. And it was interesting that the little girl in the Barbie movie, when she first met Barbie, she was just like, nobody likes you. You like portray women as looking a certain way and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, that's right. (laughs) We need plus size Barbies. I'm sure they're out there. I feel like I've not seen a plus size Barbie. They got to be out there. It's 2024. We need that. But anyway, gratitude, 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 gratitude. I have a whole podcast episode about gratitude, being grateful, goes back to what is your body doing? What is it doing right? What is it doing for you? Being appreciative and just recognizing the incredible things that your body is doing. The fact that your body can take air and extract the oxygen and take it to your brain and help you think and process and sense. And then breathe out carbon dioxide because your body doesn't need that. The fact that it can turn food, this clump of food, into energy that's helping your muscles walk and lift and sit. When you're sitting, you're actively using your muscles to stay seated. Wow. You see how you see how I can help you come up with a hundred things to be grateful for with your body? 
your body's doing a lot. So don't shame yourself. Think about why it's beautiful and how it's helping you get through life. So practice that self-compassion. Treat yourself with kindness, compassion, recognizing that nobody's perfect, nobody, and everybody has their insecurities. They really do. We all do. Even those perfect looking people. What I appreciate, and I love Beyonce. I love her. What I appreciated when I went to the concert is, and I was sitting so close or standing so close, I didn't really sit, that I noticed all the natural parts of her. Because when you look at superstars, celebrities, in magazines and things, they're always airbrushed. This right here gets nice and trimmed off by the loveliness of the computer. And so I could see a lot of like, wow, Beyonce's human type of features. And she even pointed out this in the concert. And I was just like, hmm, you know, she's not perfect. <laughs> no, she's not. Nobody is. And that's what's amazing. Um, being perfectly imperfect. Yeah. Now, if you find that it is a struggle for you to let go of those negative thoughts or to let go of shaming yourself, and it's gone to a place of you're not eating, you're starving yourself, you're restricting yourself from eating on purpose, even though you're hungry, you're nauseous, lightheaded, heart palpitations, passing out, physical issues because you're starving yourself, because you want to look a certain way or change your body or have unrealistic views, seek professional help. See a therapist. You might have an eating disorder. And that's where we're going to segue into next week because there's a lot I have to say about eating disorders. Thank you for listening. Find me on Instagram, dr.enjoy.life. My main website, if you're looking for a psychiatrist, I have a private practice, drenjoylife.com. And of course, I'm on YouTube at Dr. Enjoy Life MD, and I'm on all the podcasts. So whatever your favorite place you want to listen to a podcast, I'm there. Journey to Joy Live. Thank you for listening. Love yourself. Love your body. Body joy. Thank you. <laughs>